Okay then, let us commence with a little uh, mini session here. Woo! For for Aaron and his character is David Green, the Nosferatu. Fantastic. You can get in all sorts of trouble, I'm sure. <laughs> Especially since I'm not going to have backup. That's right. All right, David, uh, you separated from the rest of the group to procure a list of employees on Rikers Island in the hopes that you'll find enough information that you can pinpoint whichever guard or guards oversee the kitchen while the inmates cook. It's shortly after midnight when you arrive in Lower Manhattan at a municipal agency which handles the gathering and storage of various law enforcement records before it in turn ships them to the New York City Department of Records and Information Services. Were you a more computer-savvy Nosferatu, you might have an easier time of this, and if you were a more persuasive, less ugly vampire, you might also have an easier time of this. As it stands, though, you're looking at an imposing building with which you have little familiarity. There's no light shining from inside, but the exterior of the building is well lit. This may serve you well, for, as you'll recall, you never got back your metallic items upon leaving the clothes Hoffman Law Firm. This, much to your chagrin, includes your cell phone. Yeah, that's... That's a fuck up on my part. <laughs> but thankfully, you can tell the time. Due to how well, you know, Lower Manhattan is lit, you can surely find a clock or another sticking out in the middle of nowhere telling you, Oh, that's the time, shortly after midnight. Fantastic. <laughs> right. All right, um, I guess I'm going to start by just sort of uh, casing the joint while obfuscated. All right, go ahead and give me a perception plus larceny, difficulty six. Does trained observer apply? Um, this won't necessarily. This will give you more of an idea of uh, things that you might know about the building that are inside of it rather than outside, things you can't immediately observe. Makes sense to me. <laughs> All right, that's a failure. Um, in case okay, so what you you do see and uh, what common sense and experience with government buildings tells you, as well as what you're immediately looking at, there are numerous entry points. Uh, the building is seven stories tall, and there are there's a main door, side doors, and emergency doors, and windows. Uh, no windows on the first floor. Uh, these are all likely locked, and uh, yeah. It doesn't look like there's any windows open from what you're peering up, and you also uh, can can easily assume that there's probably one basement level, perhaps two. Um, what'd you say the difficulty was on that roll? Six. That was a botch. No, you got a success. But I thought that if I got more ones than I got successes, it was a botch. No, uh, from what I recall from the rule book, so long as you get one success, you don't botch. A botch is okay. only if you uh, you roll at least one one and there's no successes to counter that. I thought it was if you brought it down into like the net negatives. No, uh, at least uh, I do not believe so. We'll just go with that. And I think even if I am wrong on that, I think I like my interpretation better. <laughs> do you That's do you fair. do you That's dispute fair. with my interpretation? I mean, <laughs> oh no no, dude, I'm I'm fine with that. I'm gonna say if you want to go into bots. <laughs> So yeah, so there you go. There's not a whole lot of foot traffic, but annoyingly so, The as it tends to be with most government buildings, the exterior is annoyingly well lit. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be a dramatically difficult problem if I couldn't obfuscate. Right, and it's also worth noting that, uh, you know, Obfuscate does have, like, a maximum reach, so someone far away, you know, down the block might see a little shadow scurrying about on the building. Right. <laughs> okay, what about neighboring buildings? Uh, what about, could you repeat that? What about neighboring buildings? Uh, would it be possible for me to get over onto the building's roof via a neighboring building? Certainly is. Um, there's uh, this building, and of course, it's possible that you could scale the walls of this, or perhaps uh, 
enter through another building. Uh, this one is, you know, being how Lower Manhattan tends to be fairly compact, of course your problem would be infiltrating another building of that sort. Well, I assume that at least one of these buildings, I, I may be assuming wrong, uh, has some kind of fire escape. Yeah, that seems fair. Uh, this building has uh, is the emergency doors that would be more used for uh, like escaping, because you know it's a fancy enough thing. But older buildings around it, certainly you can find one with a fire escape. So yeah, I'm going to try and get up onto the roofs of this place and try and find a way to kind of, I guess, free run onto the other building. All right. Um, well, doesn't take you much difficulty. You're uh, you're a determined enough vampire, and uh, w w with some hobs attached to you, you can certainly uh, pull a pull a ladder down from a uh, hanging fire escape and uh, scale it. And you're at the top of some other building, uh, staring at the. Uh, we'll say you know you've got about a story of height. And uh, the gulf is, well, you're not entirely sure about that. I believe if you're actually going to jump it, there is a roll involved with that. That would be, what, strength plus athletics? There we go. I resumed my recording. Uh, if a player makes a perception plus athletics roll, difficulty 6-3... Oh, sorry. I had to press my fucking push to talkie now. If the player makes a perception plus athletics roll, difficulty six, three successes required before attempting a jump, he may gauge exactly how many successes are needed to make the leap. Trained observer will apply for this one. Oh, I was actually going to guess that it wouldn't. Uh, I suppose a trained observer enough. Uh, you could just eyeball it. Well, we'll go ahead and say sure. You'll need three successes, though. At a difficulty of six. Okay, I'm probably not going to get that. Nope. Uh, you got one success. Looking at it, it's not going to be an easy hop, skip, and a jump. Uh, you will know mechanically that uh, uh, jump rolls are made versus a difficulty of three. And you're going to be able to make a running jump for this building, so it's strength plus athletics. Uh, each success will launch you two feet. And uh, it's going to take you a few successes to make this. But you don't know how many. How much would that be changed if my running uh, start was boosted with celerity? Like with me spending a point of vitae. Uh, well, since, uh, I don't think Celerity has any governance in your Strength plus Athletics role, I don't think that would actually end up being changed at all. Damn, I was hoping that it, uh, would work since I can move at double speed for one round that way. <laughs> no, no, uh, your Potence will certainly, uh, uh, contribute to it, but, uh, not so much the Celerity. Right. All right, you know, fuck, let's do this. Um, I think that uh, it's seven minus self-control for when you're hungry, right? It sure is. And you have 11 blood points. So as long as I keep above five, I don't really have a risk of uh, true, proper hunger. Though we'll definitely need to feed later. Yes, as long as you're five or above. Uh, you slip under that, though? You're uh, you're gonna have some problems. All right, I'm gonna spend uh, four points of vitae to boost strength up to six. Okay, you are surging with power for the entire scene. Just you bulk up immensely. Your Nosferatu muscles are tingling. <laughs> yeah, and uh, plus this way, uh, if I end up finding something that I can't pick my way through because I don't have my fucking lock picks. I can uh, try and force my way through stuff. All right, since you have no athletics, this will be a straight uh, six die pool. Uh, seven. Seven with, with your potents. potents, right? And I'm going to spend one point of one more point of vitae uh, to make that potent die an automatic success, as per the vitae rules. All right, uh, sounds as for the good. Potents rules, rather. 
All right, so you're down to six blood points, six in your blood pool now? Sounds right. Okay, go ahead and roll them dice. Bam. Let's see. Uh, with uh, since the difficulty is three, the one subtracts, but you still have five successes. Oh yeah, you clear it. <laughs> That's you, what fifteen feet. You uh, let's see. Uh, each success counts as uh, two feet. I believe it is. Yeah. Okay. Each each success on a count roll counts for two feet vertically or three feet horizontally. So yeah, fifteen feet. You clear it. And uh, rather up. Uh, and rather, you you clear it with a good distance to spare. You are uh, you are you are safely ensconced on the roof of the uh, municipal building here. <laughs> I mean, if I've got to clear something, I'd rather clear it safely. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm, not, I'm definitely not arguing that. You got it. <laughs> uh, looking up here, there is definitely a roof access door. And, um, it's one of those like uh, I suppose a. Uh, it's hard to try. I suppose it'd be something like a one of those school doors or whatever, where it's like it's locked from the outside, but you can push it open from the inside and it opens easily. Right. One of those metal type doors. I can't think of them anything outside of a damn school or a college, though. That's what it is. I know exactly what you're talking about. They also have them in hospitals and stuff. Right. No roof windows. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not really surprised. Um, is there anything up here that I could... Uh, let's see. It, it opens outwards because it's got the push bar, so that would mean the hinges are on my side. Uh, is there anything out here I can use like a rod to uh, poke the pins out or something? Mm, go ahead and give me a wits plus larceny difficulty nine. Crap. Well, uh, that all cancels out to a failure. No, no, it does not look like there's anything that you can use to try to leverage that out. Okay. Let me think. Okay, well, uh, this shouldn't have... Uh too extreme of a latch. Uh, do I have like a card or something on me that I could use to try and jimmy it open? Well, uh, what sort of equipment are you carrying with you since uh, all of your metallic gear got left behind? Right, well, uh, what I still definitely have on me are the Ziploc bags, the flashlight, the latex, not the flashlight, the Ziploc bag, the latex gloves, the swabs, the zip ties, the rubbing alcohol, the talcum powder, the packing tape, the notepad, the handkerchief, uh, the water. So, actually, I have the uh, the business card of Carter, don't I? He gave you a little uh, slip of paper that had uh, his extension number on it. <laughs> All right, what about the uh, cardboard cover of the notepad? Is that uh, thin and stiff enough for these purposes? What'd you think? I do not uh, think for the process, for the purposes of trying to uh, loosen the lock of this door, no. I mean, you could certainly okay. attempt to try it, but uh, you'd be going into some serious difficulty there. <laughs> I'm not one yeah, to tell a player no, but you but you don't like the uh, the potential odds of success on that one. <laughs> okay. Also, you guys are going to hear me maddingly cackle, cackle even though uh, Aaron can't hear me. I forget about these things sometimes. When okay. Um, yeah, are there air conditioning units up here? Hmm. There does appear to be one, yes. It is a... Uh... Perhaps, uh, amusingly enough, it is encrusted with ice. 
I mean, it's not like it's going to be on this season anyway. Right. It is worth noting there it, there is a light amount of snow and ice still on top of these buildings. Uh, remnants of the ice storm. Uh, not even such contact with uh, uh, warm buildings has uh, gotten rid of all, all of it. Right, I figured. Okay. Um, I am going to go up to the air conditioning unit and try and pull off the grate on the top. And... Uh, if I can, I'm going to try and do it as quietly as possible, even if that raises the difficulty. Because it's more important to uh, get what's inside uh, without getting detected than it is to get it quickly. Hmm. You know, more, more prying, less wrenching. Right. I'm trying to think of uh, what sort of difficulty might be applied in such a situation as that, or whether I should have you make a separate roll entirely. It would probably be a pretty high difficulty. Yeah. Uh, for for what you're looking at doing, uh, normally for someone of your strength, uh, this wouldn't uh, be such a problem. But uh, since what you're looking to do is try to create a little noise, I'm looking for, this can be an extended action, I'm looking for a difficulty 8 pure strength with three successes. That works for me. That's pretty much how I would have done it too. Let's see what David gets here. And uh, this time I'm obviously not spending a Vitae to get an automatic success with Potence. Alright. So that'll give you uh, your seven dice then to roll. Exactly. So that's two successes in on the extended action. Alright, you're wrestling with it. You haven't created any undue amount of noise. You haven't botched or failed anything. You can roll those dice again. That's a failure. It is. Uh, seems like uh, with all the ice and snow solidifying this thing in... Uh, you're just not applying the right amount of force that you feel would be best for you to get it done silently. It's considerably loosened, but uh, you, you, your hands let go of it and you stare at it. You're, uh, you're concerned of, you know, maybe a guard is like very close to the damn thing and all of a sudden there's a loud noise, the whole building's alerted, and then you have police swarming all over. <laughs> right, okay. Um... Well, if it's loosened, at least, I guess, uh, I guess I've got to go for it. Um, I'm going to try and uh, do one quick wrench to pull it off. All right, there's no need for you to roll for that. You're so strong right, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm significantly above superhuman. Yeah, the, the thing is easily wrenched off. And there is a loud metal groaning. Uh, with the sudden removal, as well as all of the ice and snow, whatever. <sighs> right. Now I'm going to uh, head behind where the uh, the roof access door is. Okay. Uh, set the grate down there and wait for about a solid 60 seconds uh, in case someone comes up to check. All right. Time passes. If someone heard you, uh, 60 seconds was not enough time. No one is on the roof yet. No one's even on the other side of the roof access door. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, hope that that was enough uh, and head back over. What I'm going to try and get is one of the fan blades, or part of one of the fan blades, to use to help me jimmy open the lock. Alright, they're definitely not moving, which is nice. But uh, ice right. and snow has definitely come through as well. These things are uh, pretty hardened. Are you going to try to be quiet with an attempt to remove one of these, or are you just going to wrench it out too? I'm going to try and uh, be quiet again with, again, if I end up messing up, I'll just fucking take it. All right, we'll go ahead and say the same difficulty thing applies. Uh, difficulty eight, three successes. 
because uh, this thing is pretty uh, cold, and if you're trying to be quiet about this. <laughs> that works for me. Here's my first roll. Uh, you have a, a success there, which means you can continue the extended action. And... Oh, Fuck. shit. <laughs> uh, well... Fuck, kidding me. Uh, apparently, uh, your superhuman strength is such that, uh, you've, uh, you actually broke the entire fan while pushing it further down the air conditioning unit with immensely loud screeches of metal. You have seriously broken this thing. And the sound carries a significant amount of distance in the chilly early Sunday morning. If no one was disrupted by that, there is not a single damn person who's alive in this building. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, I'm going to, uh... I'm going to carefully be listening to see if I hear anyone coming. And I'm going to try and move quickly to take the grate, put it back on top, and toss a few handfuls of snow on there to try and, uh, make it less obvious what just happened, then go back to hiding. All right, uh, since you're scurrying around a bit here so much, go ahead and give me a Perception plus Alertness difficulty 7. Well, I can always use my mute. Um, yeah, Perception plus Alertness difficulty 7 since you're moving around so much. Right. I think there was another situation where uh, I might have to just turn myself on continuous transmission of this fucking TeamSpeak channel so I don't get confused. I see my recorder going and thinking I'm just talking the recorder. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a failure. You don't think you hear anyone, but common sense tells you that uh, something's going to be happening. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so if I can uh, get that done without getting interrupted... Uh, after that, I'm going to try and uh, hide back where I had left the grate before and uh, obfuscate. If I do get interrupted, well, then we'll see what happens. Okay, let's see here. Nah. I make dice rolls in my head. <laughs> Shh, for a little mini-session like this. I also... I had them in a notepad, uh, planned out just in case. I'm sneaky like that, or at least for purposes like this. Don't tell anyone. It's a secret. It does not seem that you are interrupted. However, uh, the, the grate kind of looks a bit, you know, you kind of like haphazardly put it back on with some snow, just like throw it on there. Yeah, as soon as you uh, uh, get a hiding point, uh, you hear someone behind the door, and the door opens and there is a, a powerful beam of a flashlight that is sweeping along the roof and it, uh, it focuses rather intently upon the air conditioning unit you hear uh, one guy uh, one guy uh, who's still in the stairwell what the hell was that Barry and the guy close to the door I don't know a head peeks around. Anyone out there? He continues to sweep around. Alright, um, aside from generally just trying to avoid detection, I'm also going to get a pen ready, because now that the door's open, I'm going to try to stick a pen in the door as it's closing, just to keep it from quite latching. Hmm. Once they go back in, that is. I think that might be a, a dexterous larcenous type of thing to try to sneak that in. Oh, I think it absolutely might be. Yeah, all right. Um, the the guy who's uh, who who has the flashlight, he steps out onto the roof. Um, the other, the second man, uh, is holding the door open. As uh, this guard here, you're taking a look at him. He, it doesn't look like you know, like a true police officer. Or like, you know, one of these guard guys, simply because, you know, New York City doesn't have police officers to spare for every single night detail. Even for a municipal building. A uh, guy with the flashlight, he's coming to the... He, he walks over towards the air conditioner grate. The air conditioning unit, rather. 
Yeah, I kind of figured. And you are obviously not spotted or seen in the slightest. Right, and I'm, I don't think that there's necessarily any way that I could uh, distract him from that grate without drawing further attention uh, to the whole situation. No, there's definitely not. Like, let's, let's, uh, let's... It's not like a video game where you can throw a rock. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like you throw some snow across the other side of the room. I don't think that, uh, you know, snowballs fit into the throw rock discipline. No, I don't think so. No, that's the throw snowball discipline. And uh, since you're so strong, you just might crush the damn thing into powder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the man with the flat, the, the, the big uh, mag light, he's uh, standing over the air conditioning unit. And um, he uh, it appears that he sees through uh, whatever you had attempted to do. He uh, manages to lift up the... Uh, the grate that was removed and says, the air conditioning unit up here is broken. And there's a cry of alarm from the stairwell. What? Let's hope they think that it uh, isn't necessarily vandalism. Not that I actually expect them to not right. think it's vandalism. Guy with the light peers down and just like, um, you know, with the grate removed, like, holy shit. What? Dude, you need to take a look at this. I mean, there's no way that he would have possibly done that. Right. And so the other guy who's standing in the stairwell uh, comes out of it. Um, the door is swinging shut in the process. Uh, really? I was hoping that they would door stop it or something. No, it seems that uh, they're planning on a... They, they might have a key to actually open up the door. Right, I figured. Okay, um, I'm gonna... I, I don't think that it... Does it look like I could move in there fast enough, even with celerity? <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Not Just without definitely sure. drawing in attention to yourself. You can attempt to place the, the pen in, if you would so wish, without no. somehow being spotted, or you can just I, I wait. Feel like, I, I feel like they'd uh, notice the pen when they were coming back inside. And the yeah, was yeah, yeah, that's, that's a fair point. All right, so now you have these two security guards. They're both peering over into the air conditioning unit. You have thoroughly decimated from this end. I think I did a lot more than just remove a tenth of it. Uh, they're both looking at each other with wide-eyed horror, and um, they, uh, they don't share any more words with each other. Uh, instead of the guy who's not holding the flashlight... Uh, reaches for his phone. And, uh, he dials a number. And, uh, as you're standing there, he's obviously, uh, dialing, not just as a superiors, but the whole idea of the fact that the building may very well have been infiltrated by something, because it's not every day that, you know, an air conditioning unit is thoroughly wrecked like this. <laughs> right, I'm trying to decide whether or not it would be a good idea to try to take these guys, or render them unconscious, anyway, before they can actually do that. Right. You can certainly, you know, get one guy. It just, you know, they, they're not like super stamina guys, but the fact that you'd have to ambush them both and try to knock them both down. Right. Uh, do they have guns? Uh, it does not appear that they are armed with guns. They have uh, billy clubs. That's it. They're like little baton things. <laughs> okay. Um... The guy with the phone, because it's just one of them trying to use the phone right now, right? Yeah, the other one's holding the flashlight and still uh, curiously peering into the air conditioning unit, his eyes wide. Alright, um, how long does the kiss last after you let go of it? I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> um... I think and, the book's actually pretty vague on it. Yeah, I... I suppose they might end up weakened enough, it depends on like how much blood's taken from them, before the euphoria, or the strangely 
painful and pleasant situation? I suppose the best answer is you're not exactly sure. But especially not after what failed with uh, you trying to embrace someone after you accidentally killed them. Right. It was. So you're basically saying it's a wibbly wobbly, timey wimey amount. Yes. It completely indeterminate. Depends on the person and all sorts of crazy chaotic factors. All right, I'm going to come up behind the one guy and try and plant the kits on him. Okay, um... That's dexterity plus brawl, correct? Well, before you do that... Let me see here. Find some examples of rolls. What I'm looking for is a, um... A dexterity plus stealth. This shit isn't really helping me, at least. Not. Difficulty 7. Due to the slickness of the ice and snow upon the roof, uh, trying to move as carefully as you are without the snow crunching from beneath your feet. I understand. That was precise, Count here. Uh, you're trying to do this quickly enough so that you can interrupt the guys before, uh, before a call is made and suddenly police are breathing down your neck. We'll say no. Okay, I was wondering if the precision would help with, like, foot placement and stuff. Possibly if you're trying to take your time about this, but, but you're trying to, enough. you're in a hurry. Right. No, I get that. Okay, uh, let's give that a try. And I, uh, so I would get the bonus for celerity here, regardless, because that gives a bonus to all dexterity checks. Correct. I did that quite well. Yep, you succeed. You uh, do not make a sound, and uh, you are now free to attempt your uh, your little uh, attack roll upon the guy. Right. Let me just uh, bring back up. Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, there we go. The okay. rules for like stealth and stuff. All right. In combat. So yeah, the bite itself, as you noted, would be a uh, difficulty, I mean, dexterity plus brawl. Right, and would this be a rear attack? Yeah, uh, the guy with the flashlight is definitely peering into the unit, so his back is turned. Okay, because, I mean, this isn't going to be like a traditional damage dealing attack, so ambush wouldn't matter here. Right. So this would be uh, this would be two plus dexterity plus brawl. Right. It does appear like a, a, the accuracy of a bite a, appears to be plus one, so it adds a plus one die to the dice pool for that attack. Oh, fair enough. And uh, I'm saying in advance, I'm going to try and take three points of blood. Okay. Um, it, enough for it to be not quite safe, but not enough for there to be real risk of actually killing him. It's worth you know? noting that the guy on the phone, is, you're definitely going to be breaking your obfuscate and revealing your position. Oh, I know. Um, as soon as I've drained him, I hope that that incapacitates him long enough for me to take out the other guy. Okay. That's what my plan is, anyway. Alright, go ahead and make a... You know what? The hell with it. The guy is back's turn. You're, <laughs> you're definitely strong enough. There's no need for you to roll. You grab the guy. He lets out a little yelp of surprise. You sink his fangs into his neck and drain three blood points. Uh, if he is completely powerless and helpless to resist you, uh, he is certainly not the type with a superior enough willpower to try to struggle. The guy with the phone, uh, who is was basically waiting for the call to connect, uh, he takes a look at you. And screams, I expect. There is a loud scream, combined with him dropping the phone. Uh, he he runs for the door and... Uh, Fumbles for the key, I expect. He actually, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's, he's darted for the door. Um, he, he's slipping a little bit on, the, uh, on the, the surface of the roof, but so powered by terror that he is he's just said fuck his friend because what the hell is that <laughs> and he's frantically fumbling for a key to try to get the damn thing open wondering why yeah. he didn't put a doorstop in <laughs> it would have made everything easier for everyone <laughs> yeah. all right 
Um, I'm going to let go of this guy now and uh, try and bolt over to him and bite him as well. Okay. Um, the guy you let go of, he doesn't put any resistance, uh, so weak and surprised and woozy, he slumps over. Uh, as for you, uh, we're going to have you actually make a dexterity push brawl for this one then. Oh, that's fine. And uh, does he still have his back to me because he's fumbling with the key at the door or not? No, he's, uh, he's half looking at you and his friend who just fell, so he's definitely aware of your presence. Okay. So this would be dexterity plus brawl plus one. Yes. And I'm actually going to spend one of those fancy points of Vitae I just got to get uh, two turns uh, with Celerity. Two turns with Celerity? What do you mean? Or two initiative passes, rather. You can spend a point of uh, Vitae to trade the bonus die you normally get from Celerity in to instead get two actions. Right, the second action will take place after whatever his action is. Exactly, but uh, I'm still going to spend it. Okay. What do you plan on doing with your second action? Um, do I have to declare beforehand, or do I declare when it uh, comes around? Uh, well, we're not exactly following the traditional initiative rules here. It's not like that he's going to know what you're doing. I was just curious what it is that you plan on attempting to do. Oh, uh, mostly a second bite or a like smacking him in the head if he remains uh, not incapacitated. Okay. Uh, so are you trying to bite him or are you just like a straight up like punch in the face or what? Yeah, I'm going to try and bite him. Okay. Go ahead and roll your dexterity uh, plus brawl plus one. So because you're using that for the second action, you don't get the bonus celerity die, right? Precisely. Okay. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah, uh, let's see. I think that this actually pulls him into a clinch, uh, after which I can try and bite him. So you're going for a, uh, a clinch more than uh, a... I think that's actually the way that the, uh, rules for biting work. So, uh, yeah, to move. use a bite attack, the vampire must first perform a successful clinch hold or tackle maneuver. There you go. Which wasn't a big deal when I was completely undetected. Right. Unfortunately, uh, a clinch hold or tackle maneuver uh, has to have been done first in that case, which does not use dexterity plus brawl. It uses strength it plus brawl. Ah, crap. Well, in that case, I would have done it even... Okay. Then I'll roll strength plus brawl, which is... I don't think that's necessary. Okay. You're superhumanly you... strong. <laughs> I was going to say, which is even higher. <laughs> and uh, that'll automatically deal my uh, strength in uh, damage to him as part of the clinch. In bashing, that is. See, in the first turn, the attacker may roll strength damage. And see, okay, so uh, you grab him. Um, he's kicking around, you know, weakly there a little bit, uh, you know, lets out the, the cry of shock, but he's terribly afraid of you, and I don't think it's going to be too difficult for you to easily sink your teeth into him. Right, I'm going to roll the strength anyway, because that might be enough to incapacitate him regardless. Okay. And that's, uh, seven dice, which can be soaked by his, uh, stamina as usual. Right. So, three points of bashing. Uh, he is bruised. Alright, and then I'm gonna uh, pop the bite on him. It's perfectly fine, he's immortal. And he is and so I'm... terribly afraid of you, he is not in full control of his faculties. You got it on. Because I've already hurt him, I'm only going to take two points of blood. Okay. And uh, with that done, you feel like letting him go? He's not resisting you anymore. Yeah, I'm going to make sure that these uh, guys aren't uh, really going to do anything to me now. There's light, weak sobbing from, like, the first guy, but everything that you've done combined with the shock of what they just experienced, they're not even attempting to remotely stand up. They're, they are not prepared for this. <laughs> All right. Um... I'm going to uh, zip tie their wrists and ankles together and uh, uh, 
gag them with some kind of uh, cloth if they've got like uh, a handkerchief or a sock or something on them. Sure, that's perfectly acceptable. And then I'm going to drag them inside so that they don't get hypothermia. Okay. Uh, gonna... You do that, of course. You know the door's closed. And right. Long. I'm going to take. I'm going to take their keys, obviously. Okay. You take a set of keys, and uh, there's several on there. You spend a little bit of time figuring out which one, to, uh, and the door opens, and you take them inside into the stairwell. They're both conscious, but they appear to be, like, shell-shocked by what they've just experienced. Right. Um, I I'm going to try to, uh, hopefully, uh, give them a, uh, oh, I don't know, almost a hyp hypnotic suggestion right now. I, I, I'm not saying I'm, like, using weird powers or anything. I'm just going to say, uh, this was a very, very bad drug trip. Okay, the, the, the horrifying-looking Nosferatu, who <laughs> looks completely disfigured and gross, right, looming over with this, this, this was, was a, a horrible... horrifying drug trip. <laughs> There's like little whimpers. One of them has clearly urinated himself, and the other one may have defecated. And you leave them. I mean, I, I doubt they're going to explain it as a vampire attacking them at this point. Right, of course not. Um, oh, and uh, if the wounds on their neck are still open, I'll give them the lick as well. Okay. They are licked close. Cool. Uh, wow, that was a debacle. Yep. So you're in the stairwell. It is lit, uh, Well, uh, which is not true for, you know, the actual interiors of the building. Right. Um... Okay, I guess now I'm going... Actually, I'm going to take one of their flashlights, too. That's perfectly fine. The guy who you surprised from behind dropped his flashlight into the air conditioning unit, but the other guy who was on the phone, he still has his. You can take it. Right. Um, and I'm not necessarily going to turn it on yet, but I'm going to keep it on, you know, standby. Okay. So, uh... So, yeah, there is a, uh, a door that opens uh, down on the second floor, and uh, a voice calls up... Uh, Barry? Jim? Are you all right up there? I heard- I thought I heard someone scream. Alright, I'm going to cough a few times to try and uh, explain why the voice is about to sound so strange. And then choke out, uh, drop my damn flashlight. Hmm. And I can roll- what would that be? Subterfuge? Plus manipulation? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would end up working. Uh, considering the fact that you sound so damn strange, though, I oh, think yeah. th I think it's fair to say, uh, although the the, sev the distance couldn't distort the volume due to the echo, I definitely want to say that uh, since you never really heard the guy's voice a whole hell of a lot, and they might not be that familiar with each other, difficulty 8 on manipulation plus subterfuge. Right, and if I hadn't done the cough to try and uh, give him a way to explain it away, it would probably be even worse. Correct. And uh, I believe this is met by, uh, what is this resisted by? It, like, oh, so much I trying think to... it would probably be... Perception plus... Perception plus empathy. Yeah, that seems fair. Fuck. Let's hope this guy fails. And he does! <laughs> so, um, you sort of, uh, you fail to get off the impression, and, um, he, you know, there's just a long pause. And then, are you sure you're all right up there? I know it's cold out there, but wh wh where's the other one? What happened? What's wrong up there? There was obviously a loud, is the air conditioning unit okay? What the hell? Fuck. Quickly, what does your character wish to do? Have a smoke. Or, uh, he's having a smoke. And roll that again? Yeah, roll that again. Fuck. 
fuck? God damn it. <laughs> oh, goodness. Am I just going to have to leave an entire building full of unconscious and uh, terrified guards? The, uh, there's another long pause, and then that, that door there is on the second floor, it just falls shut. Okay, I'm going to try and sneak after him as quickly as possible. All right, uh, you're you're at the roof access, so that's gonna be uh, that was on the second floor, and uh, building seven stories tall. Oh, that was on the second floor. Yeah, he was yelling far up at you. Oh, um, hmm. that's why you know there was no opportunity for him to see you, and why the voices right. were being distorted by the echo. It's just, and you know, the, the loud noise of the air conditioning unit being destroyed combined with the scream that echoed from the roof. And I've got no clue what floor the uh, actual records I want would be on, correct? Nope. If okay. you've been in this building before in your mortal life, it's been so long that you, there'd be nothing of value for you. Right now, I figured. Okay, um, what would it be to try to drop down and catch myself on a railing? <laughs> Let's see here. See, uh, there is a rule for, uh, of a failure whenever you jump, you can make a dexterity plus allowness. Athletics to allow the character to grab onto a ledge since you know you're going to be attempting such a fall um, It wouldn't be so bad, but do know that by that point you have fallen Like a severe amount of floors. You've got a lot of speed attached to that You might be looking at a uh, dexterity plus athletics roll of eight just to ensure you properly latch onto it Okay in that case, I'm going to spend two points of Vitae in order to boost Dexterity up to six as well. All right, you are a super strong, super fast creature. Inhumanly. Inhumanly so, correct. Which matches your appearance all too well. And, uh... Yeah, let's do this. I need to move fast. All right. That would be, uh... Dexterity. Since I don't have athletics, that would be just a straight dexterity roll. Straight dexterity, because you have that, uh, that celerity that, of course, adds to your dice rolls. Unless you're trying to use it right. for additional actions. <laughs> I mean, if I did, that would allow me to, uh, then immediately move after I successfully latched on, right? It would allow you to immediately attempt to, uh, pull yourself up which would be an automatic success, basically, for you, due to how strong you are, I'd say. Yeah, you know what, I'm not going to keep spending all that Vitae when uh, uh, I'm getting so... Actually, no. <clears throat> yeah, I will. I I'll spend another point of Vitae on top of that to... Uh, uh, yeah. So does that take you down to seven? Seven. Okay. So in that case, you're not going to have your bonus die from Celerity, then. You'll just have right. that for another action. Okay. Which means this could be uh, tragic and or hilarious. <laughs> and yet it's not. It's not. You uh, you managed to just snag on with that 10 there. Uh, you launch your body five stories down <laughs> through the narrow stairwell. And the hopes and of catch. And pull myself up almost immediately. Yep, with your supernet, and it's uh, for perhaps you know, with your incredible catch there, it seems as if you've definitely bent the iron, the iron railing there a bit. <laughs> Due uh, to how I strong you are. Server. Let's see. 
Oh no, not disconnected. Error, someone is already using that player name. Please choose another name and try again. I'll go ahead and uh kick you. That Yeah. Alright. You should be clear to rejoin now. Sometimes that happens with Java. Thank you, Java. <laughs> Apparently you weren't allowed to just uh, innocently stare at a Manhattan map and make die rolls. I don't understand what the problem is. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, you've cleared that distance. Um, yeah, I'm entirely unsurprised by the fact that I've been to that bar. Yep. And, um, it, it, is, it is seriously fucked up. The, with your strength combined with the fact that you had fallen so far and just can't caught yourself, shoulder's a little sore. You might feel that later, but uh, no, no injury in cause in like, terms of like health damage. Right. Okay, then I'm going to... Uh, uh, since I'm now vaulted up over the side, yeah. I'm going to... Uh, move up and open the door so that I can uh, judge what I'm going to do next. Okay. Unless there's a window on the door. There is not, no. Okay. Uh, you open the door and it's into a very dark hallway. Uh, off the distance you see a a flashlight quickly bobbing to and fro as uh, in the very dim light its wielder is apparently running as fast as he fucking can. Alright, if I... Uh... If I use celerity again, can I catch up to him and attack in one turn, or just catch up to him? Hmm. He's such a distance away from you now, he got a little head start. Although, uh, you did, uh, descend that thing pretty damn fast. Uh, Gotta close the distance. Yeah, we'll definitely go ahead and stay with the celerity. You can easily catch up. As a matter of fact, you could step right in front of him. But it would be running for you, so you wouldn't be able to attack during that situation unless you wanted to say, you know, instead of using your celerity to for extra speed, you'd be using it to get into a second action, but then you wouldn't exactly catch him in the first action turn. Right, I mean, to get the extra speed, you actually have to take the two actions to move. Right. But no, you could certainly catch up to him, but you wouldn't be able to attack him immediately. And like I said, you could stand in front of him if you so wished. If I rolled Dexterity plus Athletics or something, might I be able to catch up to him and have an action? Hmm. You know what, sure. Yeah, you're, you're, you're the heroic sort, why not? We'll go ahead and say Dexterity plus Athletics difficulty 8. Okay, and I am going to be spending yeah. another... But you are running on a fairly, you know, dark terrain, which is why the difficulty is so high. It's dark and unfamiliar to you. And uh, if this roll fails, then I assume I'll just be able to spend my second action to catch up instead. Right, unless you botch. <laughs> unless I fucking botch. <laughs> I do not. You do not botch, as a matter of fact, you do succeed. All right, so what would you like to use as your your action here? I'm going to try to pull him into a clinch. Okay. There might be a penalty or something associated with that as you two are uh, running as fast as, as fast as possible. <laughs> no clue. You might want to increase the uh, difficulty up to seven or eight. That seems fair. Seeing as how uh, you just exerted some effort there to, to get to him... I would say difficulty 8 is reasonable enough. Okay. And that would be, let's see, strength plus brawl. Strength plus brawl, yeah. And I'm behind him, right? Mm, yes. Technically okay. so. <laughs> so that would also get me the bonus for back attack. Sure, he definitely didn't expect that you could have cleared such a much distance. He didn't know what the hell was up there anyway, and uh, he's certainly not going to know even when he looks at you. That's 12 dice, then. You couldn't possibly fail this, right? Whenever you roll all 12 dice, go for it! 
No, I couldn't possibly fail it in before a dramatic botch. No, I couldn't possibly fail it. It does not look like you botched that to me. I'm gonna say that, uh, there's a little, a squeal of terror there, as you suddenly, with powerful arms, and when I say powerful, of course, I mean immensely, incredibly coursing with supernatural power, powerful arms. Amazingly so, stronger than any bodybuilder arms. He, there's almost yeah. like a little squee. You know, you pick him up like a little plushie. And let's see, that's actually one, two, three, four, five, six successes. So, uh, you want me to roll, uh, you know, bashing damage now? We'll say that combined with, uh, just how powerfully you just, like, grabbed him, like, oh, nom, 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 I'm gonna eat you, and how scared and how surprised he is by this sort of thing, he, he just, uh, falls unconscious both as a result of what you've done and the combined strain of everything. It's, right. like, you're, it's uh, like you're a fucking boa constrictor, only instead of, you know, taking some time to operate, <laughs> you just... Alright, um, and I'm, I'm gonna check his pulse, make sure he hasn't had, like, a heart attack or something. No, he's alive. Uh, the heart, though, is beating very frantically, especially after okay. what just immediately transpired there, and uh, he, he is hanging limp and unconscious in your <laughs> powerful arms. <laughs> Okay, with the amount of strain on his system, I don't think it would really be safe to uh, take Vitae from him at this point. Okay. Uh, I don't think it would be safe to take the normal safe amount. I'll take one point. Okay. Just hey, you to, go uh, and do that. The, uh, the flashlight that he was carrying clatters to the ground and rolls. And uh, I guess I'm now going to try and stash him in one of the rooms. Okay. That's reasonable enough. There are all sorts of uh, various offices. You can certainly find an un unblocked one, and it's opened, and very dim light, but you do have a flashlight there. It's not as it's not as awesomely cool as your flashlight, but you left your flashlight somewhere. The only thing awesomely cool about my flashlight is that it's itty bitty. <laughs> all right. These are like um, massive mag lights that you could potentially use as a weapon, but it would irreparably destroy the damn flashlight. Especially with my strength. Yeah, especially with your strength. Um, but he's currently in the office. Did you want to do anything more with him? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to zip tie him and gag him as well in case he wakes up before I leave. Okay. And, uh... You, 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 hear, a, you hear a door open. And, and call out, Thomas, are you all right down here? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> see, and, uh, you, see, as you look out from the office, you see a beam of light moving about, and, like, oh, shit, that's his flashlight. All right, how close is this guy? You're inside the office, you know, it's... How it's, close does it sound like he is, rather? Go ahead and give me Perception plus Alertness. Trained Observer will apply. Difficulty 7. Two successes. Seems like he's uh, further on uh, down the hallway. It's just that uh, he perhaps was patrolling on the same floor. He just looked around a corner whenever he noticed things and he saw the flashlight. Um... You would really have to make a committed run, you figure, to run out of the office and then get to this guy. So that you couldn't actually make an attack on him straight up. But you could probably scare him into unconsciousness. <laughs> and with my luck, this time it would be an attack. With, ah, with my luck, this time it would uh, actually be a heart attack. It is worth noting that the masquerade may have been uh, sharply bent and contorted in this night. You think? <laughs> if, if I can uh, get one of these guys uh, uh, down at some point, I'm going to... Uh, 
Uh, aside from the guys upstairs that I've uh, explained that this is a drug trip to, I'm going to uh, try to uh, act like there's some kind of gas leak and they're hallucinating. Ah, okay. Uh, roll manipulation plus subterfuge. Be like, hey, hey, can you hear me? You all right? You just fell down. I think there might be some kind of a gas leak. You okay? Then you try to explain yeah, the whole fact that the air conditioning unit on the roof is destroyed. <laughs> I'm not explaining that. <laughs> so, uh, what would you like to do? Of course, you don't have to step outside and you can just stay in the office. You were, you were astute enough to close the door behind you. Right. Um... It's really a gamble on whether or not he comes towards the flashlight or decides to go away to alert someone. Know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely know. Alright, um, a combat turn is three seconds, right? It can be a varying amount of time, but the shortest possible amount of time it can be is three seconds. Alright, I'm going to wait for just a couple of seconds, you know, one turn's worth, uh, to try and listen to whether he's leaving, coming closer, or staying where he is. Okay, go ahead and give me perception plus alertness, difficulty sucks. I succeed. You definitely do. Now let me determine what he's doing. <laughs> he's staying put. No sounds of movement. Thomas? Alright, you know what? I'm just going to try to make a confused groaning sound from this doorway. Would that be uh, manipulation plus subterfuge? Sure. You're not exactly uh, doing a whole lot of crazy communication things, so we're going to go ahead and make this a difficulty five. It's fairly easy for you to do a guttural sort of sound. Yeah, it is. All right, uh, you make uh, the, perhaps an injured groaning noise, and uh, you hear rapid footsteps uh, approaching, uh, you know, just walking down the hallway, heading towards the office as you're getting closer. All right, I'm going to... Uh, I don't think that readying an action is a thing in this, but I'm basically going to prepare to pounce him. Yeah, we'll go ahead, and uh, it's definitely not a thing, but... We can definitely say that you would get a surprise sort of thing. Uh, so you you rest there, uh, crouched in the uh, the shadows, although you have your own flashlight emitting light, and uh, you wait. Oh, I thought that I hadn't turned that on yet. Oh, okay. No, you hadn't. It's fine. I'm just fucking with you, really. <laughs> <laughs> just like when I do whenever I say, the only sound you hear is your breathing. Vampires don't breathe! Right, right, right. Uh, the beam of uh, light uh, that's been bobbling about, obviously, um, gets closer to the door, and he opens it. And uh, what exactly it is it that you were hoping to do? Oh, I'm going to grab him and I'm going to bite him. That's easy for you to accomplish. He is completely taken by surprise. He was expecting an injured companion. Uh, this per perhaps being a bit naive. All these little rent cop security guards together. <laughs> Uh, he is taken, right. and you sink your fangs into him. There's a, a yelp of surprise, of course. As you know, uh, he tries to kick, you know, and uh, screams out a bit, but then you uh, you sink the fangs in him, and it all stops. And uh, I'm going to take three points of blood from him, and if he's still conscious after that, I'm going to try and do the uh, gas leak thing. Okay, he is, uh, he's definitely, uh, he's, he's conscious enough, he's, he's definitely woozy, you know, when you let go of him, he slumps to the ground, a flashlight again clatters and rolls into the office. Cool, I'm going to, uh, zip-tie his wrists and ankles, just in case, I'm 
I'm planning on coming back and uh, releasing all of them on my way out. Just, just saying. Okay. And uh, how I'm many zip to, ties do you carry with you? One of those big ass, uh, like economy bag amounts. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Nosferatu. <laughs> Just, like sprinkle on it. Are they like multicolored too? You know, sure, sure. <laughs> All right, it is done. Man, and it's less an actual bag and more like a whole fuck ton of zip ties all held in a bundle by another zip tie. Right. That that, that definitely does make sense. I'm sure. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna zip tie him up, gag him, and be like. Uh, dude, dude, are you all right? Are oh, you all right? And there's some kind of gas leak in here. Are you okay? And that would be what? Manipulation plus subterfuge again? Sure. We'll. Um. Well, I don't think you're in exactly. Uh, I don't think he's exactly in a position to be very manipulated right now. <laughs> he's he's not all there. I I I know. I'm more trying to plant the seed. You know right. I mean? Okay. You've 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 done that then. With how much exactly it takes, you know that uh, human beings tend to rationalize anyway. What what they have difficulty explaining. So just like yeah, yeah, it must uh, yeah, it's a gas sink or stuff. Yeah. Right. Because so the alternative is believing that what they saw you is real. Right. So when I come back later and release them and be like, uh, hey, I think there's a gas leak. You should all get out of the building. You know, yeah. it must have been one of the other guards telling them to get out. Right. Assuming they perhaps haven't g gained a fuller command of their senses by then, sure. And if they have, well, maybe they'll have an avenue to rationalize it anyway. <laughs> I like that. I mean, it's, it's about covering your bases, you know? Even right. if it's implausible to have them covered. Right, of course. All right, now I'm going to uh, head out, and barring any other guards interrupting, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and uh, go find where uh, these particular records are stored. Okay. If the doors are labeled, I'll you know check the door labels. If they're not, I'm gonna go try and find some kind of directory. Okay. Um, spend some time wandering around this floor. Uh, doesn't look like uh, the records that you might be searching for are kept here on this second floor. Uh, all sorts of other random knickknacks and things, but you're here for a specific goal, a mission, and uh, doesn't look like the Rikers Island Penitentiary uh, employment records are, uh, are kept here. As for where they could possibly be kept, uh, it seems that, uh, you know, looking around and getting a sense of things, uh, how about give me a... Hmm. Wits plus investigation difficulty seven. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, these would be kept on uh, basement two. There are two basement floors, as you figured as much there would be. All right, I'm going to... Uh... As a matter of fact, you, 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 uh, you, you read that so well that... Uh, you're also looking around for all sorts of various information and uh, looking around a bit, and uh, perhaps it was a good idea that uh, you didn't try to uh, try one of those uh, front doors or side doors, because there is an alarm system in this building. I kind of figured. Yeah, but apparently the roof was just, you know, who the hell is going to get up there onto the roof? No one could jump that. Nope. <laughs> and even if they did, I mean, I had a key coming in, too. Right. And, uh, yeah. I... yeah. I figured that a government building would have alarms on the ground floor. Yep. Um, yeah, you uh, you definitely got that. And, uh, in order to get there, um, there's a uh, there's a, there's separate stairwells on the ground floor that take you into the basement. Um, alternatively, you could ride one of the two elevators. I'm gonna take the stairwell. Okay. Um, I feel like I've got a pretty good chance of sneaking with a uh, obfuscate. Right. Um, you easily descend the uh, stairwell down to the ground floor. Uh, taking a look around. Are you going to actually use your flashlight? 
I assumed you were using your flashlight up on the second floor. Oh, uh, when I was, like, looking around for directories and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely using it then. I'm not going to use it now if I can avoid it. Okay. Um, the door opens. Uh, go ahead and make a... Wits plus stealth roll, difficulty 6. This is for the process of trying to open the door as quietly as possible, as you're peeking onto the ground floor. Right. Yep. I make it. You're fine. It, you worry a little bit about it. You, you you give it, like, the odd eyeball, and apparently the door is intimidated by you. <laughs> it, it opens. No sounds. Doesn't look like there's, uh, there's anyone patrolling about, uh, off in the distance you, uh, you do see the, uh, the main front doors of the building, and so a little bit of light is streaming in from outside. But beyond that, uh, no, doesn't look like there's any light. Alright, I'm going to try and obfuscate if I can, and, you know, sneak over to, uh, where the door is supposed to be. Okay. Uh, in this case, I believe uh, checks for those sorts of things are uh, made at a plus two uh, difficulty, courtesy of the fact that uh, you have so little light, it's your fumbling in the near darkness. Right. Speaking of which, uh, how's that uh, search for the Protean uh, instructor coming along? Well, uh, you haven't had the opportunity to do that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured. Yeah, you asked about that uh, after our session, like due to the right, ice right, storm and right. everything. You haven't had any more time since you ended up here. No, I, I know, I know. Yeah, and it's like, well, as it turns out, you find a gangrel sitting on the ground floor. <laughs> Give me your blood. <laughs> You're like, son of a bitch! <laughs> Man, in retrospect, I should have been a city gangrel. Right. So how many blood points do you have? You did only say ten. you... Okay, ten. I just wanted to make sure that was being uh, checked. Yeah, that's fine. Um, go yeah. ahead and make a Perception plus Alertness difficulty 8. And a uh, Trained Observer does not apply here, correct? Well, it's visual-based. Uh, whenever you pick the Trained Observer specialty, what exactly were you looking for in regards to it? Uh, basically, the way that uh, police are trained to uh, detect or remember... Uh, details in their environment when they're actively observing it. Alright. Uh, we'll say no, then. It does not apply. You're trying That's... to find the stairwell, and, and you really can't observe a whole lot anyway in this situation. Right, that's what I figured. Oh yeah, I find it. You definitely do, and make a dexterity plus stealth roll difficulty 6. And this is all still the same scene, right? Same scene? Absolutely. You have a lot of dice. <laughs> I have a lot of dice. We won't say you automatically succeed, given the, uh, the, the danger of this situation, but... I had a lot of dice. You managed to avoid uh, stepping on a rather squeaky uh, section of the floor that had apparently just been waxed recently. And been buffed up. And, uh, you make it towards one of the stairwells that leads down to the basement. There is light coming, uh, as you, like, you know, you can see it under the crack of the door. Alright, I'm gonna observe the light for just a few seconds to see if it's moving or not. I want to know if it's, you know, the normal stairwell lights or if there's someone with a right. flashlight there. This one's an automatic success. It's stationary. Cool. I'm gonna go in. Okay. Uh, would you like to try to open the door quietly, or, uh... Yeah, I'm going to open it quietly if possible. All right. The door, uh, apparently, uh, it's it's all right. It's, uh, you don't have to make a roll for that. It opens very well enough. Then the stairwell is lit. And it goes down only a little bit to basement one and basement two. And uh, the records were supposedly in basement two, correct? Yes. From what your investigative nature deduced, yes. Okay. I'm going to head on down and uh, see what's what. Okay. Uh, you scale down the staircase, and uh, 
get to the door. Um, how about give me a perception plus alertness difficulty eight as you're standing on the uh, the stairwell side of the basement two door. It's a uh, oh it's, yeah. It's a uh, it's very uh, faint, but you're damn sure with all the successes, it's someone whistling. It's funny how I'm, I'm just succeeding like crazy now. <laughs> if you, and you and you reason out the fact that you know if there are guard or guards down here in the basement, they probably didn't hear whatever the hell you destroyed up there in the roof. Right. Nor the scuffle. Yeah. All right. Well. Hmm. The gamble I'm making here is whether there's one guard in Basement 2, or more than one guard. If it's just one guard, I'm planning on giving the door a little knock to see if he'll come over. You're fucking, like, Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what was that? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure he'd want to check it out regardless. Right, of course. These guys aren't the, uh, the sharpest knives in the drawer. You know, oh, tra yeah, no, trained I... operatives definitely would have been doing a lot more than staring stupidly inside the van. <laughs> Dude, I, I, I know. <laughs> so a knock, yeah, that's definitely reasonable enough. As opposed to them going, oh, I better call this in. Yeah, you know, whereas, you know, that's what they might have fucking done immediately once you destroyed the damn air conditioning unit. <laughs> but nah, let's go check it out first. After all, they wouldn't want to get in trouble for calling in something that turned out to be nothing. Right, of course not. You know, it's just like, yeah, they, you know, they have superiors breathing down their necks all the time. They don't want to waste anyone's time. Right, and that's the psychology that I'm uh, trying to work with here. All right, uh, yeah, I'm going to give the door a couple of uh, knocks. Nothing too hard, but hopefully enough to bring them over. Okay, with your uh, incredible intense strength that... Okay. Yeah, like like wrap it with one finger. Yeah. Imagine well enough. Um, the whistling stops. What was that? Does anyone answer his question? No. Okay, then I'm going to tap twice again. You hear slow footsteps. Uh very faint they are they're walking down and they're getting closer to this door on the side it's very slow and uh as you look through the crack of the door you can see that a flashlight beam is uh moving about trying to pinpoint it all right uh i'm going to give the door one more little tap Stops moving. The flashlight beam focuses upon the door. It's a rather quick movement as he approaches this door into the stairwell. All right. Um, if he opens the door, I'm going to try to nab him. Because clearly the best strategy when sneaking into a place is attacking all of the guards. Um, he ends up doing just that, walks right into your trap, no rolls are needed, you easily get the jump on him. Cool. And, uh, my then I, uh, I'm going to take, uh, three points of blood and repeat the whole gas leak thing as I'm, uh, binding him up. Okay. Uh, where do you want to stash him? I'm going to bring him into basement two with me and stash him behind one of the racks of stuff. Okay. Yeah, uh, as you're looking around a bit, and as you can see, this, uh, this place is actually, uh, it's, uh, there's, uh, there's a few, like, uh, there's, of course, like, I suppose it'd be just, like, the best way to describe it be, like, a massive, like, records collection, like, one of those giant college libraries, and you have, like, exterior rooms off to the side where, like, individual research or other things might be carried out. Uh, this main area is dark, and, uh, you're definitely able to stash them out of the racks. As you're looking around, though, you can see that, uh, 
there uh, a door from one of these uh, little rooms off to the side. There's four in total. It is uh, partly cracked, and uh, there is light coming out of it. There's also right, a window, too, and uh, it appears to be a, uh, a man in his late 30s, uh, graying temples with glasses. Uh, he's sitting behind a desk. Uh, there is a mountain of manila folders on the desk. He is obviously uh, going through stuff. Okay. Um, I'm going to see if I can, as much as possible, just move around while obfuscated without being detected. And if not possible, I'm going to go up to him and uh, drain him as well. Easy enough. He is not paying a single damn attention to what's outside of that room. Okay. Um, is there enough light to see by in here? No. Uh, given how big the room is, while he has some light coming in from his room, and you have, you'd have to use your flashlight to just start studying things. And it would be, it's less efficient to use your flashlight instead of having, you could, er, you could easily turn on all of the lights in basement too. Yeah, that'd probably draw his attention. It's possible. All right, I'm gonna try and go in there and uh, take him out as well. Okay, um, you go ahead and uh, see. So, yeah, you gently push open the door. Uh, he's busily scribbling away at various things and saying, uh, "Please, can I just have 15 more minutes?" You know, the sound of him frantically scribbling on things. That implies to me that he's expecting some kind of uh, advisor to be coming down here soon. I'm trying to decide. It's all right. He's he's in. He's so focused on his work and frantically scribbling that uh, he's not looking up from the desk. In that case, I'm going to try and peer over his shoulder to see what his work is. Okay. Uh, it's basically, uh, he's just, uh, from all these manila folders, he's just, like, trying to compile a bunch of, like, research data things from the records. It's nothing pertaining to Rikers Island, so it's not of immediate interest to you. But apparently he's expecting someone to come by and get it from him, like oh. now-ish. Although, uh, there is a shadow you end up casting along the, the desk. He, he does end up stopping his work, and he's starting to rotate his head to look behind him. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take the bite and, uh, uh, take two points of blood from him, uh, bind and stash him as well, and, uh, be on the lookout for someone coming in to check on these guys. Okay. He is easily taken, and, uh... Up to full. Yep. It's also worth noting by this point, uh, enough time has passed that, uh, your, uh, the blood points that you had invested into your strength and dexterity have, uh, dissipated. That's fair. Um, how's my shoulder feeling? Shoulder's alright. Uh, again, it's, like, no, uh, no damage that you're gonna have to spend a blood point to heal. It doesn't just subtract from your health levels, it's just... A little sore after that, uh, that, uh, that athletic feat you pulled of snatching that damn, uh, guard railing. Right, and it'll never stop being sore unless I spend Vitae on it, right? Since vampires don't heal. Right. Naturally. Yeah, that's fair. Fuck it, I'm gonna spend a point of Vitae just to kinda, you know, patch up normal wear and tear. The pain and, stops uh, bothering you. Take a third point from this guy. Okay, <laughs> done and done. <laughs> what? So here you are, having egregiously broken the masquerade on a few instances, <laughs> standing on the second basement level of <laughs> the records building, as you're looking for a fucking, you know, employment role or something. I mean, I figure if I've already egregiously broken it, I may as well, you know, fix up my shoulder. Why not, right? And I'm going to give him the same, uh, you know, gas leak line. Okay. 
He appears to be a bit more into it than uh, the guards, perhaps uh, either with greater intelligence or perception or uh, willpower, what have you. There's like a weak nod involved. It's kind of like a, a wobbly nod. Like he wants to like shake his head. Just, just, right. Like maybe I mean, like a these, figure eight. All these guys that I've taken more than two points of blood from should be confused and woozy for the next day or two at least. Indeed. Which makes this whole thing even easier. Or even less ridiculously difficult, rather. Right. All right, I'm going and of to. Of course, uh, you know the fact that uh, you, you, the only two, uh, two people whose uh, bite wounds you let close for the guys uh, by the roof access stairwell. Oh shit! Seriously, I uh, wasn't trying to lick all of them closed. <laughs> well, I mean, I thought it was assumed too, but then you mentioned it to me for those two guys up there at the top. I was like, "All right, sure." Well, uh, the reason I mentioned it for the guys up top was because um, uh, for the uh, one guy that I was going to, you know, run away from and go right. bite him as he was go fumbling at the door. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't have had time to lick that one. Closed. I know. I'm just fucking with you. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, if if you weren't fucking with me, then I would have to make sure that I lick the wounds closed when I go up right. to unbind everyone. Yeah, it's perfectly fine. I okay, mean, cool. uh, if, if, if I was going to do that to be a dick and, like, obscure that from you, I wouldn't have told you that now. Right, right. Okay, okay. so, um, what would you like I... to do, then? For now, I'm going to, uh, search around using the flashlight, because... I'm fully expecting this guy's superior to come in pretty shortly. Okay. Um, given the extent and wealth of records, boxes full of things, uh, and uh, how large this is, and with so little light, you're going to have to give me um, um, wits plus investigation difficulty 9. And this is going to take uh, quite a few successes to reach. Uh, all, each, uh, roll that you end up making, like, each set of rolls is going to take an hour of time. And you're going to have to accumulate, it's not overly difficult, you'll have to say, ten successes. Right. If, uh, if this, uh, supervisor isn't here, uh, by the time I finish this first roll, I am going to turn on the lights. Okay. So in that case, uh, there you go. Shit. Looks like uh, this first uh, hour was spent uh, milling about fruitlessly, frantically waving the flashlight, going, Come on, they're in here somewhere, damn it. No one else has arrived. Okay, then, yeah, I'm, I'm going to flick on the lights. Okay. Uh, with the lights, it makes things much easier. Uh, you have a uh, Wits Plus Investigation Difficulty 7. But you still have 10 successes to accumulate. Okay, one hour passes, so and you've three got successes. three successes there. Uh, I'm going to go check one of these guys' watches. I want to know what time it is. Good call. Yeah, we were looking at 3 a.m. Okay, so if I keep going at this much longer, I'm probably going to have to try and hide in the sewers tonight. Perhaps so, yes. Maybe that it will explain, uh, you know, speaking out of character, why, why your guy didn't get into immediate contact with the rest of the coder. <laughs> Right. I'm actually going to look around in here to see if there's any kind of tunnel, like maintenance tunnel, utility tunnel, sewer access, whatever, around here. Uh, not in this uh, basement, no. Which is the okay. fucking lowest floor, of course. Of course it wouldn't have anything convenient like that. No. <laughs> that would be ridiculous. That'd fucking make your job easier, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm actually going to take a couple minutes to head up to B1, then, and uh, see if they've got anything like that up there. Okay. You casually saunter up the staircase and open the door to basement one. Stealthily. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, you do that, then. Um, this, this door is... Uh, Stores, uh, well, actually, you probably want to listen to the first, but give me a perception plus alertness, difficulty eight. Doesn't sound like there's anyone on the other side difficulty of the door. Difficulty eight, you say? 
Yeah, it doesn't sound like there's anyone on this on this side of the door. On the other side All of the right. door, rather, in basement one. I'm gonna carefully open it up. All right. Door doesn't squeak, so that's an automatic success in that regard. You peer around. Uh, you want to turn your flashlight on? I'm actually going to take a listen first, see if I can hear any kind of breathing or anything like that. Okay, perception plus alertness difficulty six. No, you don't hear anything. You hear, like, perhaps, like, hissing and thrumming of the, uh... Of, like, the entire building. But nothing right. like, say, a person. Alright, then I'm gonna flick on my flashlight and look around. Turns out that this is the area where all the maintenance shit is kept. Why the records are kept below the whole maintenance thing completely escapes you. You attribute this again to government bureaucracy at work. Of course. Alright, I'm just gonna look around, see if there's any kind of uh, maintenance tunnel, utility tunnel, subway tunnel... Uh, sewer access in here. Alright. Takes you about uh, a half hour, but definitely so. Yeah. Okay. Again, well, why then. why all this access? Like, you're assuming that perhaps the basement 2 is a secondary addition. This is like old remnants of, you know, the building gone past. But you could certainly access the, uh, you know, and finagling with things, you know, perhaps passages that no human would wish to tread. You could certainly get there. Which, I mean, it's looking like that's the way I'm going to have to get out of here. Perhaps so. Alright, um, I'm going to then uh, head back down and uh, keep looking for the information I want. Once it gets to be about an hour before sunrise, if it gets to be about an hour before sunrise, I'm going to uh, release everyone, uh, take the appropriate boxes if I haven't found the appropriate uh, specific documents and head into those tunnels. Okay. Um, let's see. It's about uh, 3.30 uh, whenever you step back into the stairwell to head down to the basement too. I want you to make perception plus alertness difficulty 10. Shit. Okay, you head back down into the, uh, head back down into basement two, and, um, you're free to continue your research. As you do check the clock, it is 3.30 by this point. Okay. Then, uh, let's see, that's investigation plus wits? Yeah, investigation plus wits difficulty seven. Bam! So All right. that's at uh, 6 out of 10 successes, right? 6 out of 10 successes. Um, by this point... Okay, 4.30. You check the clock again. You got 6 out of 10 successes. And... Um, the basement two-door opens. One of them, anyway, since there's two stairwells. All right, can I try and duck behind one of the racks real quick? You certainly can. Um, let's see here. That might be like a dexterity plus stealth to try to do this so quickly whenever the room is so brightly lit now. Uh, difficulty of eight. You per Perhaps oh, it would have been higher, but you are such a perceptive individual that uh, it did not immediately catch you by surprise. I'm actually going to, as part of this, spend... Uh three blood points, one to increase my dexterity back up to six, and one to increase my strength up to three. If that's okay. Let's see, two to increase it up to six, dexterity six, and one to increase strength up to three. Yep, because my maximum per round is three. Right, you can certainly do that. Now for your All right. dexterity now plus delta. You want to spend a willpower point to get an automatic success on this? <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a little tempted, but let's see. I've got six, seven, eight dice here. That just means eight ones, right? <laughs> that does just mean eight ones. <laughs> <laughs> All 
You know, I'll try it. I'll try it. So I, I what knock over a rack? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Holy That's shit! That's fucking beautiful. God, I love when shit like this happens. Not just one one, but three. Three ones and not a single success, because fuck me, that's why. Not only do you absolutely fail at any point to disguise the fact that this incredibly ugly, horrific-looking Nosferatu is here, but you do. You slam down a rack, and given how strong you are, uh, you know, three dots for the fact that, you know, the whole thing's right, it shakes wobbly, and... It goes fallen. It falls. Fuck. It falls towards you. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Let's go ahead and have a dexterity plus athletics. We'll just say difficulty six. You're attempting to dodge this rack from falling right on top of your body. Unless you want it to fall right on top of your body. It's only going to be blunt damage. You know, bashing. The thing is, I don't think it would successfully conceal me, otherwise I would totally go for that. Right. No, I definitely wouldn't. And the fact that, you know, you'd kind of be pinned under this. Alright, so that's, uh, seven dice. Yeah. You, uh, manage to, uh, just roll out of the way frantically, like, Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! But, uh, that kind of puts you in, uh, deposits you in one of the aisles in the process, uh... The rack slams into another rack, and the, dominoes. the combined weight effect of that, you know, it t ends up taking out, like, an entire side of that. Shit, um, was that in an area where I stashed that guy? No. It's, uh, it's okay. falling away from the stairwells. But um, in the midst of all the confusion, uh, by the time you frantically look at the stairwell, the door's closed. Fuck. Okay, did I find... Uh... You know, something that could uh, be the box that I need. You've, uh, you've got m multiple boxes. With six out of ten successes, you've, uh, we'll, we'll say you have four boxes. Okay, I'm going to boost my strength back up to uh, six with Vitae. That would require three more points at this point, right? Yes. And I'm going to pick them all up and get the fuck out of there. Well, um, normally that'd be okay, except for the fact that the boxes end Bob up Barry, being... right. Yeah. So I'm going to try and lift the stuff apart to try and grab the boxes. Well, uh, it's not hard for you with a strength of six to uh, end up deadweighting this thing. It just takes some time to lift up the entire fucking rack, and the boxes with all of their manila, manila envelopes and everything, are, they opened. Shit is scattered. All right, I'm going to try and cram as much as in there as I can and uh, get out of there. Give me a final, like, wits plus investigation difficulty nine super panicky roll. You got it. No. Um, That's a... You've got four boxes. <laughs> They're, they're encumbering enough, it's just, uh, give, given how big the boxes are, you can certainly carry all four. There's no problem, it's more like lines of trying to see around them as you're frantically right, it's, scurrying. It's like, it's like trying to carry a giant-ass balloon. Yeah, pretty much. But, uh, with your strength, you can certainly keep them balanced on there. Um, which stairwell would you like to try to go in? The one that that other guy wasn't in. Okay. That's certainly possible. Uh, how are you going about doing this? I'm going to try to not make too much noise, but at this point, speed is the preference. Okay. Um, dexterity plus stealth, difficulty nine. Okay. Don't fucking botch this. <laughs> Fuck you, I'll botch it if I want to. I suppose if you want to. 
Uh, with a difficulty of 9, the 10 and the 1 cancel out. So, you're not stealthy, but you don't give a damn. You're running for that fucking staircase. Yep. And, uh, you're, you're at it now. You're at the door. I'm, uh, going to try to get into the, uh, tunnels. And okay. try and find my, uh, way into either an area that I'm familiar with, or an area that, uh, has a Nosferatu public area. Okay. Um, you do manage to make it up to basement one. Uh, as you are in the stairwell, though, there are police sirens outside. And they sound like they are right outside the building. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm, I'm going. Okay. I'm going. Um, you do manage to, uh, worm your way. It's a pain in the ass with these boxes that you had to try to cram back shut. Um, uh, frantically, uh, moving around and everything. But, uh, you are in sewer access area. Of course, as a Nosferatu, you inherently know of dangers that might be around in the sewers. Oh yeah, I know. So, like I said, I'm going to try and uh, get to either an area in Manhattan that I'm familiar with, whether because of the battles that I fought in the sewers, or just because I'm familiar with it. Or I'm going to try to find some sort of uh, Nosferatu public area, as you know, the Nosferatu tend to have. All right. Pub um, given your current, uh, the current situation, uh, I do believe this would be a witch plus survival, but you don't have survival, so it's a straight up witch at a minus one. That's that's fair. You know what? I'm actually going to spend a point of willpower for an automatic success. Okay. You managed to find an area, like an old anti-tribute, uh, sorry, uh, you've managed to find an area, I got distracted there, uh, um, a Nosferatu anti-tribute worn, uh, abandoned, still desolate, reeks a bit of Nosferatu refuse, um, the smell of blood even after a year and some change, but you're pretty sure no one's damn coming down here, unless you know what you've been hearing about the sewers are true. Right, um... Do they still have, like, the fortifications and stuff in place? Certainly do. All right, then I'm going to try and find the safest room, put down all of the uh, security measures, you know, metal doors, grates, that kind of thing. And, uh, I guess try and look through this stuff uh, with what time I have left before dawn. All right. You, uh, you did manage to have enough uh, good sense to, uh, to bring along the flashlight with you. And so right. you have a little bit amount of time to look through things. Um, scanning through all the boxes, you're so angry at yourself, angry at the things you left behind in the damn vehicle. Uh, before dawn, though, you do not find anything that will be of particular value. And uh, you do very cautiously and uh, warily fall asleep. And uh, I am going to try and sort it into, you know... Uh, useless and not yet checked okay As so in that case uh time passes we're currently on uh sunday um sunday evening whenever you arise and lose a blood point nothing has disturbed you well thank fuck for that all right um do I know my way from this particular Nosferatu Antrobe Warren uh, into a better public Nosferatu area? Um, given your current location, it's uh, possible that you could, but it would take you uh, with your with your movement speed and you carrying around these boxes and everything. It would be several hours of transit time, just walking around right. the sewers. In that case, I'm going to try to uh, sort this down to two boxes before I go and do anything. Okay. Uh, you're not sure of what time it is. Uh, it does take you a few hours, but uh, you certainly uh, discarded two boxes of what you like. Oh, jail crap for things I don't even remotely care about. You know, various guard records of things that... What the hell is this shit doing here? A collection of... These records are from the 70s. These don't even fucking help me at all. What the fuck? These should be in the archives. <laughs> right. Goddamn government bureaucracy. But you eventually, you have it down to two boxes, which you're hoping contains the answer. <laughs> which it probably doesn't, but 
Here's hoping. All right. All right. In that case, I'm going to try and make my way to a public Nosferatu area. Um, although it's worth noting that, uh, as you are familiar with, with what I've told you as a Nosferatu, uh, the, uh, the rumors and incredible fear of Niktuku, uh, situation. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. The, uh, the fact that, you know, there could be a hunter of the Nosferatu somewhere down here. Nosferatu, uh, as you well know, as you're beginning to walk through the sewers, uh, actually end up layering more above ground than they do below it. And, uh... As you walk through, you can easily say, see evidence of just like fortifications, uh, you know, actual like machine gun embankments, sandbags, any sort of things uh, just placed along in the sewers, you know, directed down various choke points and narrow holdings. Not so much for any invaders from above ground, but an attempt to stop whatever hell is chasing the Nosferatu. You also end up seeing... Um, curious things as you walk through um at one point there are um there are two withered nosferatu bodies of a higher generation they haven't been so aged um they're they're obviously dead but for whatever reason they didn't crumble down to ash uh, they clearly uh, lack blood they're just kind of like curled up in like fetal positions at one point um there is some graffiti down here as you're making your transit. Um, there is also a curious sign of the Ouroboros. And uh, as you make one particular turn in the intersection, you're not exactly uh, inclined with, say, aspects, and you might not be so supernaturally aware of hordes, but uh, as you're staring down into this... Uh, the sewer access tunnel here when you got to the intersection and you're seeing it full of nothing but fog you're thinking that this might be a bad thing yeah you know what at this point i'm gonna try and find a way up to the surface that is uh that's certainly a doing um, um one thing though uh those nosferatu elders that are curled up they're um, not um, uh, elders a higher generation they're um Okay. They're younger vampires. Um, uh, obviously, I have no idea, of, no way of telling what generation they were. Per right. Se. No, they just uh, look like like signs of aging. Like obviously, like the vampire body does age and decay in all sorts of various manners. And, okay, and you would were... assume that they were not elder sewer rats because elder sewer rats probably wouldn't have been caught down here dead in the sewers. And they were definitely uh, dead, and not just in torpor. Oh yeah, they met final death, but for whatever reason, they hadn't desiccated into ash. Okay. Then, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna just try to find my way up and out into a subway tunnel or something like that. Okay. Uh, it takes you several more hours, but uh, eventually you do end up peeking your head, and uh, you end up somewhere around here, on the Lower East Side. Uh, clock is telling you that it's uh, currently 1 a.m. in the morning. 1 a.m.-ish, like 107, something like that. As opposed to 1 a.m. at night. Right. <laughs> well, you know, 1 a.m. at night would just be weird. Gotta I mean, be repetitive be with these things, man. That'd be something that bears investigation. I know. It'd be like every time I tell you that the only sound that you hear is your breathing, and you're like, what? <laughs> okay, I'm, uh, I'm gonna try and make my way back to Queens now. Okay, uh, how do you wish to make a transit back to Queens? Just by subway. Okay, I can certainly do that. And, uh, not overly difficult for you to do so. It does end up taking some time, and, you know, out of reflex, you end up looking behind you every now and then. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fucking scared shitless. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not too, uh, I don't have too much machismo to admit that. Hmm. You know. After everything that was seen, particularly with, you know, the whole fact that, uh, you know, the fog there and the Ouroboros, uh, the heavy fog, you do feel was similar to what you felt at Warehouse 13. Yeah, which and is part time. of the reason I bugged the fuck out of there. Yeah, and shit like that. And uh, so, uh, again, buying with, you know, the, the desiccated, uh, lifeless corpses there, you uh, it does take some time, but you do make it back to your haven. Doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the haven. Uh, doesn't look like there's anyone in it. Uh, 
you're safe as safe can be all right uh first order of business uh after crawling around in those fucking tunnels i'm going to put my clothes in the washer and take a shower that is done Although, uh, whenever you actually do bother to use your olfactory senses, it almost feels as something from the sewer has, you know, is still on you. As if you could never escape it. Yeah, you know what, later I may just scrape all my skin off and regrow it. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm a vampire, suck my dick. <laughs> exactly. Problem? Give me the fucking belt sander. <laughs> I don't know. I might have to like have to make you try to re have like resist frenzy rolls for that. <laughs> do like the intense okay, agony. Fine. fine then regular sandpaper. <laughs> Call it extreme exfoliation. I'm gonna say like that that'd be so full of such tedium though, like <laughs> five hours yeah, later. <laughs> I mean everything else aside, David actually does care about his appearance. <laughs> All right, of course. I mean, he tries to make himself as presentable as he can, despite being hideous. Yeah. It's a, it's a good appearance of Zero. All right, I mean, that's it's, done. It's, it's well-dressed and nice-smelling, at least. There are no interruptions. It's a, it's a pretty windy night uh, out, is it? Or at least it seems like there is a, some howling from the, uh, from the surface. Maybe a slam against your door at one point, but, you know, beyond that, everything's perfectly okay. Like, the slam of a body against my door, or the slam of, like, a gust of wind against my door? Gust of wind. Okay. Um, alright, in that case, I guess I'll get down to business and, uh, try and sort Oh, and Jennifer through... Morris, the prostitute, broke out of her concrete mix. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in that case, it turns out it was success. <laughs> just took a while. <laughs> just had to let the mortar set in, and there you go. Alright, and... um... I'm going to sort through this stuff and uh, anything that it turns out I definitely don't have a use for. I'm going to toss into a burn barrel. Not that I'm going to light it at the moment. Right. Just. See, it I, looks I like in the. Say, it looks like oh. in the frantic confusion of everything, you're staring around at the boxes. It doesn't look like you pulled what you were looking for Rikers Island employee records. All right. Uh. You've got all sorts of records and other stupid shit, you know, for other parts of the city, you know, uh, perhaps employee records for, you know, other, like, precinct jails and shit like that. You're, you're like, right. you know, uh... I'll see if any of this is salvageable, at least. Um, the, uh, the only thing that uh, strikes you as particularly interesting is the fact that, oh, goody, you have a, a complete set of employee records for the 114th precinct. You know... Headed by your ally, Deputy Inspector Mikhail Vargas. Gee, how fucking useful. <laughs> Just like fucking slam against the wall. Like, fuck! <laughs> I'm gonna keep that on hand anyway in case I need to follow anyone to their home sometime and I uh, right. have lost the support of the 114th. Okay. But it definitely looks like uh, these records, you know, for as peculiar as they are, uh, that does contain a wealth of detail of every single officer within service. And you've got, like, home addresses, phone numbers, cell phone numbers that they have them, immediate family members, extended family members, years of the yeah. service. Yeah, that's not going to be useful to me right now, but that could be terribly useful later. Hmm. Alright, so I'm going to uh, file that. I'm going to file that away, and if there's nothing else even remotely useful, I'm going to dump it all in the barrel. Yep, everything else ends up getting dumped in the barrel, with disgust and okay. disdain. Well, shit. What time is it now? Uh, I assume you have a clock. You're looking at about, uh, 2.30 a.m. Alright, it's late enough that I think that I'll contact everyone tomorrow to tell them how badly I did. Uh, and try and get my stuff back. For now, I, I guess I'll go try and feed. Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and make things interesting in this regard. Uh, since it's a uh, Monday morning, um, this is actually a, a mechanic that I plan on implementing with you guys in the next session, so you end up being the first person I tested out. I've been allowing you guys to do just a simple D10 roll, but now I want to I wanna hear, like, how does your character go about the process of hunting? 
I'm thinking that what I would do is I would be, I would do the standard mugger method, wait in dark alleyways, try and grab people walking past or walking through, that kind of thing. So perhaps like say a wits plus stealth game, like some sort of like cat and mouse thing as you, you lie in wait for a wrong, uh, a hopefully approachable uh, street where there's only one person walking past and so you can snag them then. Pretty much. I'd be an ambush hunter. Right. Uh, in that case, uh, six minus five because your domain, uh, plus two because you're Nosferatu, plus one given the time of uh, early morning here. Difficulty of four. Wits plus stealth. You got it. And that wouldn't get any bonus from Obfuscate, right? We'll say no. I mean, you can hide yourself along just fine, but you're trying to find a prime location where you can ambush one person walking past. On, Bing bang bosh. Yeah. You successfully ambush, you know, just some random dirtbag who's walking along the street. <laughs> Fucking dirtbag. Give me your money, dirtbag. <laughs> How many blood points would you like to take? Just two. I want to be safe. Okay. There you go. Alright, about what time is it now? You've got a few more hours before sunrise if you want to continue trying to do this. you got you got enough in you for, say, two more attempts. Okay. Then, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep doing that. Okay. Same. Actually, we'll increase difficulty by one for the purposes of the fact that as you're getting... Even, like, closer to dawn, there's fewer and fewer people out. I gotcha. So we'll say difficulty of five now. You succeed. Another two blood points? Yep. Okay. This final one will be a witch plus stealth, difficulty six. So normal difficulty. <laughs> oh, and side note, um, my actual preference would be to take it from, uh, like, if I can find any actual criminals. Okay. Well, that's certainly possible. There's not a whole lot of, you know, uh, you know, good-faring citizens who travel along the streets at such a, a horrible time of morning, like 4 or 5 a.m. Right. I'm just saying if I can, like, find a mugging in process or uh, anything like that, that would be my preference, but that's not necessarily what I'm like. As I say, so what you, want to, what you want me to do is increase the difficulty even more. <laughs> I'm just saying if I, if I happen upon something like this, you know. Okay. It's fine. Um, if you want to hunt again, it'll be a difficulty of six. I'll give it one less go. Don't you fucking botch this. Alright, success. Cool. And I'll take another two. Okay. And then, uh, head back to my haven and, uh, just, just fucking fume. Just fucking fume for a while. All right. We'll go ahead and call that the end of this little mini-session. Makes sense to me. Alright, uh, since you pretty much caught up on along the timeline with the other characters, uh, what'd you think about it? How'd you feel? I feel like I should really remember my lockpicks next time. <laughs> that could have made things so much easier. <laughs> along with, you oh. know, not destroying the air conditioning unit on the roof. Yeah, remember my lockpicks... Pick up the ability to see in the dark. You know, all kinds of stuff, really. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, what is your character, like, taken from this beyond, like, uh, that? Like, what is your character going to do going forward? I mean, there is a huge amount of shit that he did back in that building that uh, he wasn't able to cover over now. Yeah. Um, really, it's driven... Uh driven home the idea that he needs to prepare, 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 eh, prepare, even more than he already had. Uh, clearly winging it just is not a good strategy, which he already knew, but this is a big confirmation for him on that point. And I know you didn't say it, but I'm, I'm definitely familiar that your character would have considered it second nature to put on a pair of gloves before even trying to infiltrate the building itself. Oh, absolutely. Especially since you I mean, had them at your disposal. Yeah, that's the reason I you know, listed the latex gloves there on the sheet. Um, when I am doing stuff, I'm putting on latex gloves, ideally. Yeah, that's that's why I'm, I'm definitely you're saying that uh, that's perfectly acceptable. Uh, in that case, they they might not have an idea of you know, who, they certainly won't be able to judge you based upon appearance. <laughs> right. 
Well, and plus all of the guys that were actual like eyewitnesses for the most part uh, are like loopy and confused and right. Although they may have security footage to review, right? Which, fuck. <laughs> no, I, I know, I know. I'm not sure who made uh, more egregious violations, Joseph, by uh, murdering a human in cold blood and then attempting to set that vehicle, and you know, or the... me through a series of botches. Yeah. Just fuck. Yeah. And not only that, but due to the fact that you just didn't have enough time and you were so pressured, you ended up uh, with uh, not exactly what you were going for. So you're back to the same yeah, fucking I square. Uh, from what I understand, neither group actually made any reasonable progress. Pretty much, yeah. Do you feel as if the session was fair? Did you have a problem with the way that I conducted it at all? Oh, no, absolutely. I mean, I was saying that uh, some of those should have, like, those uh, exact difficulties and stuff. Yeah. That was reasonable enough. I uh, only prepared your little beginning intro there and uh, ways that you might attempt to access the building. Uh, beyond that, I had, like, a few jotted dice rolls and, like, capabilities of what the guards could do. But, obviously, you are, you are so powerful and so fast... That there's no human being, especially those guys, who's going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with you at all. Which is exactly as I intended it. Especially not with the damn uh, blood points you expended, I mean. There's no way in hell they have any shot of resisting you. Right, I mean, my general strategy when it comes to, like, uh, combat and stuff against mortals is that if I think that I could plausibly feed afterwards, I may as well burn a whole ton of blood to make it a just, just landslide victory. Of course, you've burned through more blood points than anybody else in this entire game, and you even you even used a willpower. <laughs> I think I burned through more than my maximum tonight. You Just certainly chewed through a lot. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's one of your many perks as a vampire, and there are certainly many mortals to feed upon. But, uh, yeah, situations that ended up resulting was, you know, someone ends up going through the hallways, they find a flashlight on the second floor that's still there in the hallway... You know, someone ends up checking the stairwells. No one's reporting back in. They find these bodies, uh, woozy and weak and, you know, zip-tied together. They see the yeah. roof and the horrible damage that was caused to the air conditioning unit. They put some numbers together, and there you go. Yeah, I'm just, uh, really... I'm pretty glad that, uh, I, and by extension David, had the, uh, presence of mind to pull those guys in off the roof. Certainly so. It that it could have been some. Uh, I mean, it wasn't so bitterly frostily cold, but it there could I have mean, been some left, damage left there for enough hours. Yeah, like not immediately, but of course, you know, they weren't like dressed for wintry weather in their guard clothes, so there could have been some damage associated with that. Certainly, especially after I took that blood. Indeed, would have made their bodies even weaker. Because I would have had worse circulation. They were, they were only up there a few hours, though I'm sure nothing could have gone bad. <laughs> no, nothing. They totally wouldn't have had to, like, lose a hand due to frostbite. Because that's what uh, David needs, more guilt. <laughs> well, I mean... I mean, that's uh, kind of plays into his uh, nature, you know? Right. In that case, uh, I know there's going to be a few days until the start of the next chapter. I don't know exactly how much time is going to end up passing. Uh, again, that ends up being the court of the player characters. So if uh, you four want to get together and discuss, like, obviously you want to have some in-character discussion of David getting his shit back, and maybe a review over what transpired while the group was separated as it was. Um, there's certainly, I don't have any problem with you all discussing that at all, and letting me know whether if you even want to end up waiting until like uh, the day of the session itself and want to have the discussion in character before we really start with the passage of time, that's fine with me. But just to give me a sense of, you know, when you guys want the session to begin, because the world does move on without your participation. Right. My current plan right now, now that I, you know, pretty dramatically failed like that, is to hire a moderately sleazy but uh, reasonably confidential uh, private investigator to try to find uh, some kind of information on the chef at Rikers Island. Certainly do that. Of course, you still have the wealth provided you by the Coterie. You could try to contact, you know, 
uh, Mr. Reese over there, who is so useful to you in deducing the uh, the missing girls. And yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, Mikhail Vargas could pull a string for you as an ally. I mean, uh, it is worth noting that he is still grateful. I mean, he is grateful over the fact that you know he was getting reports of infiltration and assaults and you know. You know, vandalism with buildings, uh, sensibly caused by the Fratelli family, but he couldn't prove it. Now all that's gone. They're, yeah. Because they are no longer interfering in Astoria. I can probably use my police contacts to try and point me to a good guy as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now I'm, now I've pretty much resigned myself to the fact that I'm going to have to use outside help in order to get the information I want. Right. It's uh. You know, it's always best, you know, whenever there's few people involved as possible, but uh, David just proved that uh, maybe he can't do this one on his own. <laughs> yeah, also, fun fact, uh, I was seriously considering going back to Astoria to get my mask. <laughs> like, before I even decided to head in. You could have certainly done that, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it would have taken, you know, time, uh, but that, that was one thing that I was seriously considering. Of course, uh, you know, uh, and of course, given your 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 uh, your your access to your domain, uh, none of it's like locked with, say, like a metal key or anything. Because I could have been a situation where I'm like, "Oh, you left all of your metal keys and objects behind." <laughs> Shit, <laughs> that, that would have been the best. You go back to your your your, your haven. You can't get in. <laughs> I think that uh, one thing I probably would have done, knowing that I have super strength is, uh, you know the standard hide-a-key-under-the-doormat thing? Right. I probably would have hidden one inside of a mortared brick wall. Eh, that seems reasonable enough. It would have taken you some uh, successes to smash through, but given enough, you know, determination, you could have certainly done it. Oh yeah, I mean, it would have cost me some Vitae, but... Yeah. I, I probably would have had you roll for the simple fact that uh, if you actually botch on that, you can cause damage to yourself. Right. And I would probably have, uh, yeah... That's probably the main place that I would keep that. I might even have, um, uh, like, you know those uh, uh, lockers they have in subway stations? Yes, I know of them. I'd probably have one of those with some uh, backup stuff in it as well. That's right. As a paranoid Nosferatu has uh, yet again gotten a glimpse of what the hell's under the city and why he does not live under the city. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, I, I do like that how I went. In that case, uh, go ahead. Although this session wasn't a complete success from what you would, uh, uh, David there had hoped to achieve, uh, certainly things roll around well enough, and you did manage to escape, and through so much, you get three experience points, just like the other player characters. Cool, cool. Uh, any final questions or thoughts about, like, the session and how it went, or, what like, knowing what you know, what David might have done differently? Um, well, I definitely, uh, in the future, am going to go back and get the mask, even if it means that I have to delay for an entire night. Right. You know... In the future, I'll probably be, uh, scouting places out even more, as well. So certainly, I mean, the reason why you had that mask anyway was to hide your facial identity so that, you know... And also to kind of, you know, build up the, uh... The legend, I guess. Right, and to soften the blow of the fact of how hideous looking you are. <laughs> that as well. That as well. The, so, the mask is, is it like one of like those luchador things, or like there's, or maybe like a half mask no, with a big mouth opening. I was thinking it would be kind of like uh, one of those like uh, blue like uh, oni slash uh, like Asian spirit masks. Okay. I was just only curious, like, how big the mouth opening would be so that you could feed if necessary. Oh, no, it would not allow me to feed. Okay. I'd have to pull it aside to do that. All right. That's what I was checking for. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I'm, I'm glad you thought this was a worthwhile expenditure of two hours of your time. Oh, yeah, no. I, like, I mean, I said before, uh, if I wanted to play a game where I just succeed all the time, I would, uh, you know, god mode in a video game. I like uh, seeing my characters uh, fail and suffer. You, you certainly told me that, yes. And uh, yeah, things uh, things were definitely achieved, and uh, events took place uh, in this little uh, mini session. I I don't know how many of these I can keep doing. Though. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I get that. Two private hours with every individual character before the session begins. Like, well, shit, where, what happened to my week? <laughs> well, I mean, this is uh, more a continuation of Saturday's session for me than actually a, its own full session. Right, of course. I didn't have a problem with it. I, I thought it was enjoyable, too. I, uh, of course, uh, the, the player character ends up thinking of things that uh, the storyteller doesn't anticipate, in the case you're like, oh, okay, sure. And in this case, it's probably uh, for the best, since no one else would really have followed me into here anyway. Of course not. It would have had to have been condensed. And, uh, of course, you know, the whole situations where, you know, things end up getting made interesting with the fact that you're going to do this so stealthy and infiltrate the fucking door and every... Oh, god damn it! you ruined everything. <laughs> I mean, those botches, man, those botches. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's the incident there in the air conditioning unit, and then, like, I'm going to die behind a shelf to obscure myself. I'm like, well, you no. have all these dice, they're all made for ones, right? <laughs> Three ones. They sure are. You, you even said, you know, you might want to spend a point of willpower here. Now. And you're like, no, I got this. <laughs> nope. I mean, the willpower is there to ensure, like, you know, in those critical moments, like, say, you mentioned, like, you like to save them for, like, a combat situation or something like that. Or for situations where I, like, really need to do something and I have very few dice for it, like when I was trying to find a right. place in the sewers. Right, you know, and the situation's absolutely dire, but you're like, come on, if I if I can't get a success here with eight dice, then what the hell am I doing? Fuck. Fuck. What am I doing here? In the process of you dive, and it's like, fuck, I don't even know who that was! <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, definitely really confirmed that I need to prepare, and that I really cannot afford to wing it. Ever. Period. <laughs> That's right, I'm the only one who's allowed to wing it. <laughs> Although, to be fair, you, you have been more prepared than the uh, the other player characters for this sort of thing since the first chapter. Like, imagine how fun would have been if no one had a flashlight heading into the warehouse district. Seriously, I, I mean... But what I really needed in this situation was my lockpicks and my mask. Right. And time to actually, like, case the place properly. Indeed, you certainly could have taken the entire night, this first night, to case the place before returning the second night. In the future, that's how he's actually going to approach problems. That's good. I'm glad uh, your character has uh, evolved and gotten smart. So, what are you looking to potentially improving with the experience points? I know you went to look for, like, a discipline or stuff, so you're going to save them up? Yeah, I'm actually trying to save up for a tenth experience point to try to find a uh, person who can teach me uh, Protean. Right, you want the first level of Protean to get the Eyes exactly. of Darkness. and I'm currently at nine experience points, so I can afford it soon. I just need to find a tutor. Yep. And, uh, that tends to be the domain of, of course, the Gangrel, whom, uh, are not exactly a common thing in the city. They're more outcasts. I've given you ideas of, like, their locations, like, in various parks. But right. they tend to not be the approachable sword. So, I'm going to try to find one who might be somewhat approachable. That's perfectly fine. And, uh, try and offer him some kind of boon. Right. And, uh, that's perhaps something that, uh, can be handled. Again, I don't know how much time you four-player characters are going to have end up passing, but... I know it's going to be a few days. Uh, uh, Cripson, uh, with playing as Byron, has, uh, taken some opportunities to, uh, finagle some things, and he's gotten some information of his own, which may or may not be valuable. Well, that's good, at least. All right. I mean, I am kind of happy with the consolation prize I got here. Yeah. Uh, you know, if uh, for whatever reason, you know, Mikhail Vargas turns against you. <laughs> like, fuck you. Hey, I mean, it could be useful to have uh, all of these records of our allies for uh, leverage. <laughs> yes. That's what you use for your allies, right? Leverage. <laughs> he in turn leverages the fact that allies. you know he knows about your condition, which is a violation of the masquerade too. <laughs> and I know where his extended lee is. <laughs> and some things that are violations of the masquerade might be done to them. <laughs> like I said, allies, not friends. Per se. Allies. Does a vampire really have friends? 
I mean, some might. I'm not sure how many nights they're going to survive, but... <laughs>